the thing about um, my father's work is it's what it's how he lives on forever. I can take any book off the shelf behind me and open it and hear his voice. I'll begin by telling you she was the tallest girl that ever walked past my office door, but Dolores was a lot more than just tall. Spotty as my schooling was, I can do better than that. She was a regular Empire State Building, a female feminine dame, a glamazon, etc., etc. So, you know, like that's what you read the books for. The stories themselves are not unique. The voice is the unique part. And, you know, there is that sense out there, every story has been told, everything is derivative of everything else. And if you point out, oh, that's kind of, it really all is in the delivery. It is all in how you do it. And there's a difference between, you know, taking ideas that have been sitting around in the culture forever and making something gorgeous and yours out of it and just going, here's this thing I like. <laughs> you know, here I have represented this thing I like. My fa the example I always use, uh, Star Wars is an incredibly derivative movie. Every shot of it is a shot from another movie. The shot of Luke discovering, everyone has said this, but the shot of Luke discovering the homestead on fire is from The Searchers. It's, you know, it's beautiful. Um, but it's from The Searchers, and he's put it on another planet in a science fiction movie. And... While the private eye thing, as an example, has just been done and done and done and done, you can still read Red Harvest from 1933, uh, I think it's 33, Dashiell Hammett's first private eye novel and go, wow, that is something else. That is not like any other book I have ever read. It has tough guys and guns and people being beaten up in alleys and whatever, but it is completely unique. And if you read... My dad's work, it's the same thing. When he passed away, the copyrights were left in his will to my mother. And when she passed away, she left them to me and my sister, Susan. In the last few years, we've been slowly re-releasing the Ed Noon series as Amazon eBooks. We released the first book in the series, Tall Dolores, for free for seven days. Selling all of those books would have been lovely, but roughly nine, ten thousand people downloaded it. Ten thousand people haven't bought a Michael Avaloni book since the 80s. Mm -hmm. So in a week's time, those ten thousand people walking around the world, and a thousand of them were outside of the United States. And obviously the idea, the financial idea is there are 37 books in the series. If they like the first one, you're selling them 35, 36 more books. The marketing, since I don't have a marketing budget, has all been internet. And a few months ago, it took me a while to get this off the ground, but I launched a Twitter uh, feed, a Twitter character named Ed Noon PI. I tweet at noon New York City every day a quote from one of the books because I figure the thing we're selling is the voice. Currently, there is someone selling as an audio book a pair of uh, record albums that were recorded in the 60s by Boris Karloff reading my father's horror short stories called Tales of the Frightened. Someone ripped them off of an LP and is selling them as audio books. There's a general belief, because it was general practice, that Radio scripts from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s were never, no one ever bothered to copyright them because they were such ephemera. It was not believed they would ever be heard again. Um, so I believe this person is operating under the understanding that these were radio scripts. But the thing is, they were based on published works. Had I the time and energy <laughs> to fight, uh, I would. But um, my, my plan on that is uh, to release them myself and just say, this is the official release and have a nicer cover <laughs> than the other guy. When you're one of a line of artists, my father's father was a sculptor whose tombstones are all over Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Brooklyn. Um, those aren't going anywhere. Paperback novels from the 50s and 60s are a somewhat more ephemeral deal and they literally crumble the dust in your hands now. 
And as much as I love the heft of real books and still buy them and still read them and all of that, the idea of being able to perpetuate my father's work and his voice forever in ones and zeros where anyone on the planet can get at them, it's a beautiful thing to be able to do.